It's said that symmetry is fundamentally beautiful. But how fundamental is that? Hey crazies, my life is pretty hectic in March, but it's Women's History Month, so I wanted to take some time to honor an important woman in physics. Emmy Neuter. Wasn't she a mathematician? Technically, yes, but we got to borrow her brilliance for a few days. This story takes place in Gultingen, Germany in 1915. Einstein and Hilbert were trying to finish general relativity, but they ran into a little snag. If energy warps space-time, and space-time contains energy, then space-time should be able to warp space-time. That's what we call a paradox. They needed a fresh set of eyes, so they invited Neuter to the university. By that time, she was already known for being a brilliant mathematician. I mean, here's a list of her accomplishments. But the invitation was met with such heavy resistance from the establishment that Hilbert had to advertise her lectures under his name and list her as an assistant. Totally ridiculous. It's a good thing they found a loophole, though, because without Neuter, general relativity may never have been finished. Right, relativity. We were talking about a paradox. It turns out that not all energy warps space-time. Just the stuff in this stress energy tensor, which is all the energy except the energy Energy in space-time itself. Space-time is on one side, everything else is on the other. This was a good enough explanation for a physicist, but Neuter was a mathematician. And like a true mathematician, she generalized it to death. Total energy is what we call a conserved quantity, which is a quantity that does not change. As a result of her work on general relativity, Neuter neutably neuters something. I'm such a dork. She noticed where all conserved quantities actually come from. Symmetry. Now just to keep things clear, we're not talking about visual symmetry, like you'd see in things like organisms or playing cards. We're talking about mathematical symmetry. To demonstrate this, I've made some expendable clones. Hi! W wait expendable? Well, we can't exactly do this in the space station. Don't be ridiculous. Too many distractions. Here's a clone just floating in space. He'll still be floating over here, or over here, or over here. If the clone is moving in a straight line, he'd still be doing that here, or here, or here. That's what we call translational symmetry. And in all of those situations, the clone's linear momentum is conserved. The symmetry implies that linear momentum cannot change. It's even true if we have more than one clone in the system. What's happening doesn't change if they're here, or here, or here. Yes, we do lose the symmetry if we put them over here, but then we also lose the momentum conservation. Unless, of course, we expand our system to include the Earth. Rotational symmetry implies angular momentum can't change. If the system of clones is here, but oriented like this instead, then their physics doesn't change. Which is true if they're like this, or like this, or like this. Time symmetry implies energy can't change, but that's a little harder to show with clones. The basic idea is that you don't have to set zero time at the Big Bang. You can start your clock whenever you want, which is why we can have things like time zones, and we can switch our clocks to daylight savings time. Although no one ever should, don't get me started. The main point here is that Emmy Neutra was brilliant, and her theorem was incredibly insightful. You might even say it was beautiful. And until next time, remember, it's okay to be a little crazy.